Well, Shaka Hislop, we know you love your predictions and you're pretty good at them, aren't you? <laughs> Am I? Okay. Well, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do this time is we're going to give you three options. There's various okay. topics and categories, but you have to choose only one of the three options, okay? So we're going to start with the highest finishing team out of these three, Chelsea, Arsenal, or Manchester United. Who you got? Um, well, I've, I've got Manchester United finishing the lowest of the three. That's, um, that's, that's the easy part to this. As far as Chelsea and Arsenal go, um, I, I, I really don't think there'll be a lot between Chelsea, Arsenal and Spurs. So it really is a matter of which way the wind blows on the day. Hmm. As, as we are right now, and I know we've still got a full month to go in this transfer window and Chelsea are wrapping up their own, their own efforts at a number of different signings, I just feel, as we record right now, that Arsenal are better positioned to finish higher. So I'm going to go Arsenal, Chelsea, and then Man United. Um, but as I say, the top two is subject to some correction, possibly. Okay. Maybe. You're also you're also quite good at changing your mind after yeah, making I'm, that. I'm really good at that. That part I'm good at. <laughs> Here's one of my favourite topics. The most goals this season. Your three options mm. are Mohamed Salah, Erling Haaland, or Harry Kane. What you got? Um, I think Harry Kane, again, finishes third of the three. And I know it was a bit of an off-season uh, last year. Initially, I picked... Erling Haaland to be the leading scorer in the league and an FC. I think that's what I'm on record as, as saying, but so I should say that. But again, I don't think there'll be a lot between Haaland and Salah. I think City will again get a lot of goals through midfield. Um, and while there has been a lot of change at Liverpool as well, I don't think there'll be a lot by way of Mo Salah and his contributions. So I will contradict myself <laughs> and say Mo Salah finishes higher than Erling Haaland. I will respectfully disagree and then have uh, <laughs> then have the yeah, abuse yeah. to face at the end. I just think Haaland will will hit the ground. I'm not saying hit the ground running, but I think he'll have a super season. And if he can do what he did in the Champions League and the Bundesliga and the Austrian Bundesliga, if he can do that in the Premier League, then you know watch what, what out. one of the beauties of of this season is. I think that. At, at the highest level, at, at the league's best, mm -hmm. there's little difference. That you, can, you can make arguments for almost yeah. anything. You can make arguments mm -hmm. for, well, I think the top two will be City and Liverpool. You can make arguments as to who will finish top. You can make arguments as to who will finish in the top four. You can make arguments as to who will be leading scorer. And, and truthfully, all, all those arguments will be absolutely valid. And, and yeah. I think that's the greatest aspect to this league that... I don't think we've had for, for, for some time and so on so many levels. Yeah, I don't think there's one certainty. You can't say for certain who's going to win the league. You can't say for certain mm -hmm. who the other two teams are likely to be in the top four, who the top goal scorer is. But you have to say for certain who the best signing of the season, in your opinion, is. Is it Gabriel Jesus? Is it Richarlison? Mm -hmm. Or is it Raheem Sterling? Out of those three, who do you like? Uh, I'll, I'll again go three to one. I think Richarlison is sued. I, 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 that doesn't make an awful lot of sense to me other than to give Spurs an option um, going forward. Gives them something different, but I, I don't think Richarlison is, is, a, is a starter. Second, I, I have Sterling. I think um, it gives Chelsea real pace going forward. They, they had that in, in, in Timo Werner and continue to have it in, in, in Timo Werner. But I think coming from, from the wide area and the experience of someone like Raheem Sterling, um, I, I think is a, a very good acquisition. But best need, certainly, is Gabriel Jesus. And he has started fantastically well. I know it's preseason, and I know you can't always use preseason as, as, as the ultimate litmus test as to what's to come. But everything we've seen from Gabriel Jesus so far seems like he's going to deliver on the promise. He's going to deliver on the ask that Arsenal brought him in for. You know, I like my fantasy Premier League, Shaka, and Gabriel Jesus right now is the highest-owned player ever 
in the game oh. after scoring 846 preseason goals for Arsenal <laughs> so far. So he's been very impressive. <laughs> no, no, yes, great return. Mm. So now, uh, I don't know if we can call this the the the, the Shaka Heslop question or, or what, because you've got to pick between a couple of your old teams. I want the mm. highest placed finishing team between Brighton, who you didn't play for, at least I don't think he did, Mm-mm. you Newcastle and West Ham. What you got? Uh, I think Brighton will be third. I think West Ham second. Mm. And I think Newcastle tops that little three-team table. Uh, given everything you've seen from Eddie Howe in the second half of the season, given some of the signings they've already made this summer, I just feel of the three, um, Newcastle are best positioned to, to threaten that Top five, top six. Sancho, Grealish, Luis Diaz. The sophomore season, as they call them over here in the United States. Mm-hmm. The second season. Who will have the best second season out of those, those three? Because they've all kind of shown glimpses. Certainly, Luis Diaz hit the ground running. Grealish was a little bit slower. And obviously, mm-hmm. Jaden Sancho's had a pretty good preseason as well. This is a tough pick for you. Uh, yeah, I, and and again, going from going from the bottom, um, I'm, I, it's tough for me to decide between Sancho and, and Grealish as to who's second, who's third. Um, I think Sancho is slowly committed to terms with what's needed and expected of, of, of at Manchester United. Grealish, similarly at Manchester City, I, I thought he just held on to the ball way too long, and and it's learning and and and, and it's growing in, in in that team. And the ask, I actually think the the addition of, of Erling Haaland. Adds, adds to Grealish's own progression because mm-hmm. you now have a, a, an out and out target. You now have no excuse as to why you need to take that 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 extra touch. So we'll see. But right now, I'm thinking uh, I'm thinking Sancho third, Grealish second, but not an awful lot uh, in between them. And and Luis Diaz for me, not many people come into a league and have the kind of impact that he had for Liverpool in the second half of last season. And I think it just continues. I, I Probably the exit of Sadio Mane kind of thrusts Diaz into the spotlight um, a whole lot more. And there's nothing I saw from him uh, last, last season, second half of last season, that suggests that he's not ready for being in that limelight. So he tops my little trio in that mm-hmm. regard. Your triumvirate. We're going to end mm. with your specialised subject, goalkeeping. Who's going to keep the most clean sheets? Will it be at Manchester City, Ederson? Will it be at Liverpool, Allison? Or will it be with some new players in front of him at Tottenham Hotspur, Hugo Lloris? I just feel that Spurs have too much ground to make up on the top two, both in terms of, in terms of, of goals conceded, um, Spurs conceded 14 goals more than, than the top two last season, kept five clean sheets less than the top two last season. So that's an easy thing. Picking first and second between the two is more <laughs> difficult. Now, we had a discussion on ESPN FC a few weeks ago, and it was, it was Steve Nichol and Stuart Robson. And we were, the question, I think, was who would keep more, more clean sheets? And the, the other two started to talk about who had the better defensive record, who conceded more goals. And, and I interrupted to say, well, the question is clean sheets. The, the two don't necessarily go, go hand in hand. Mm-hmm. Just because you keep more clean sheets doesn't necessarily mean that you've conceded less goals. Then you look at these two last season. Both kept 21 clean sheets. Both conceded 26 goals. Absolutely nothing to get between the two uh, defensively in, in any measure. So now the question becomes, well, who's going to be better defensively this time around? And as we discussed, you can make an argument for either as to who would be better defensively, even if we are talking marginally, because let's be honest, it will be a marginal difference. I am going to lean Liverpool just. Um, okay. I just feel they look more settled, more solid defensively. And that's going on preseason and a glorified preseason friendly 
in the community shield. So again, I reserve the right to change my mind at will. Um, but one thing I will say with some certainty is whichever way you go, there's not going to be a lot between these two. You know, the one thing, just to end, Shaq, going on last season and taking it into this season, we all watched all the games last season. I can't remember too many matches that Liverpool and Manchester City played where they had a lot of the ball, where the opposition didn't have at least one chance and either Edison or mm. Alisson produced a, a really good save. You're not going to get many against them, but you are likely to get that one good chance because if you can get the ball quickly, get it back, and then in transition when all their players are forward, hit them on the counter with pace, you are going to have some opportunities. Uh, and that's... that's... The, the big ask for everybody else in the league, taking those few mm. opportunities when they do come, if you can, because you're right, you're not going to get many. But then that is also the argument as to why you need goalkeepers of the quality of Edison and Allison when they aren't going to be making an, uh, an incredible number of saves. Because when they do, when they're called on, it is absolutely significant. And which mm. is why. Though they are underworked, they are absolutely integral to the successes of the best teams in any league. Not, not just the Premier League, in any league. So there's Shaka's picks. Three choices. Has to do a one, two, and three in each of the topics. And do you know what? I think I agree with you on most of them. The one exception, I'm having Haaland over Salah. But I mm. think they'll both get more than 20 goals. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.